Good morning, everybody. Gil with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. I hope you enjoyed last week's video if you got a chance to see it. We actually painted a picture of our beloved sailboat right on the front of our actual home. We found a local artist that could do the work. If you didn't see that video and you have a mobile or a tablet device, I'll put a link that'll pop up right here in the upper corner of the screen. Go ahead and check it out. It really is cool. And it got me thinking how cool it was that it gets uh, remembered in posterity besides just in our hearts, right? So now we have, uh, we have this picture right on the house after the refit. And the funny thing about it is we, um, a couple of years ago, just about a year after we bought the boat, my mom came for a visit in New Orleans. And as we got to the hotel, we walked in to go meet her there and she's checking in. And as I walk up, there's a mural on the wall behind the front desk. It was all a bunch of local scenes in black and white from some years past. Lo and behold, there is Dream Chaser, our specific boat. Uh, we actually tracked down the previous owner to find out if it was truly our boat, and he said he heard that they had taken those photos but didn't know that it was up anywhere. So it was really cool. So now we not only have the boat in its original state in a mural at a hotel, we also now have it right on our house. So it's really a cool thing for us. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, if you didn't see it, I'll put that link in that upper, upper corner there. The video we're about to show now is actually from Halloween week. We had a subtropical depression form in the Gulf of Mexico, just south of Texas and Louisiana. It formed on a Friday. It kind of came up quick. It was interesting. Um, we pretty much had notice um, mid-morning Friday, and it was due to hit shore Friday evening. They were kind of calling for it to hit somewhere between Texas and Louisiana. Unfortunately, it shifted east and was heading pretty close to uh, New Orleans Direct, which is where our boat is. Um, I will say I'll show footage of this. We only have the cameras on the boat. And to my daughter's credit, she did a phenomenal job taking care of the boat. She was nervous, there's no doubt. Um, winds were up over 40 miles an hour, so certainly not a hurricane, but still a strong storm. Um, she did a really good job with that, so we'll show kind of how that worked. Uh, frankly, it started up fast and it moved fast, so the good news, it didn't sit there for a long time. We also take the girls to a little Halloween celebration in downtown Punta Gorda. Really cool way the community comes together and celebrates Halloween in this area. Again, we're new to the area, but it was really neat to see um, just to have that sort of sense of community and all the things that they did for that. Really cool. I also go ahead and take out the power boat on my own. Um, you know, there's a couple of reasons. One, I enjoy going out by myself. It's, it's sort of a peaceful time, right? It's something you can just sort of reflect and think. The other thing was an ulterior motive, and that was for me to get a little bit better at driving this darn thing. Uh, and you know what they say, right? Practice makes perfect, or at least it makes okay in my case. So hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. I don't want to end up with a copyright violation, so I'm just going to do the talking about this. But uh, subtropical storms number 17 formed in the Gulf of Mexico Friday morning. And it was due to hit the coast of Louisiana Friday evening and essentially be gone Saturday. So it formed very quickly with very little notice. That's pretty uncommon with hurricanes or tropical storms. It wasn't going to be extra strong. Uh, the wind was actually low enough that it didn't actually form into the name storm. It would have become Olga had the uh, winds got up over 40 miles an hour. But they were close. And you can see the footage here of the boat. Um, this was in the middle of the night, Friday night. And I have it in fast motion. So it's basically just capturing when... Um, when there's you know severe motion or you're seeing uh, you're seeing my daughter and her friend here um, They got up several times throughout the night. They stayed on the boat um, She called in the middle of the night. She was pretty nervous I, I guess she had loosened the lines a little bit to account for some of the surge and a couple of times the boat had um, blown so hard to one side it got to the very end of the dock line, but the dinghy davits um, kind of tapped the the pylons on the starboard side of the boat and I think that certainly startled her. You get a lot of motion and then you hear a loud bang which is not a normal occurrence. So um, she ended up getting off the boat and I'll show you some of that here in a minute but she ended up loosening up the um, tightening up the lines a little bit where they could which is not easy to do in 40 miles an hour with wind with a you know a 60,000 pound boat. Watch the boom real quick. You can see that gust of wind, how hard that thing pushes over. And I think this was the stage where it pushed the boat out away from the dock and hit the davits into the actual pylon on the back starboard side. Uh, you can see Whitney and Joel getting off of the boat right here. Whitney's going to check it out. As I mentioned before, trying to move um, a 60,000 pound boat by hand when the wind is fighting against you is just about impossible. Uh, you know, one of the tricks you do is you you stand on the taut dock line that goes between the boat and the dock, 
putting your weight on it to pull it closer. And then as soon as you do, you get somebody else cinch it in real quick. So she's down on the actual dock doing just that right now. Uh, I will say, neither of them lost their sense of humor. Um, while she was nervous, you can even see the lightning in the background here, but while she was nervous, you know, she's telling Joel what to go ahead and do. Like, hey, we need to tighten up the line here. Let's make sure this is okay. And he's, aye, aye, Captain, <laughs> shiver me timbers, right? So they're laughing and joking around, I think, just to keep themselves um, a little less fearful of, of sort of the weather right here. Uh, but yeah, it got pretty hairy. You know, you look at this and you're like, oh, that doesn't look bad. But it was these little bursts of really strong wind. Um, and they started about 4.30 or so in the morning, their time. Um, and then, you know, within 15, 20 minutes, the really heavy ones were gone. This thing went pretty quick. So the good news is as the winds let up a little bit, she came back and got again, she was checking the lines. You know, we end up with a lot of surge that goes up and then it comes back down quickly where we are. So the damage was pretty extensive in this area though. There was a local festival that completely flooded out. Some of all the, the equipment and barricades blew down. Trees and power lines were downed all over the town where we keep the boat. Um, it was pretty rough and as far as what we looked like in the morning as the sun came up, you know, you can see that the complete deck of the boat is just covered with little tiny um, <laughs> strippings from the trees that are all around us. Part of the reason why this is such a great hurricane hole is because of all that protection. I mean, we're literally five miles up a river with cypress trees all around that line the sides of the river. Uh, and then we're in a little horseshoe shaped marina as well. So fairly well protected from wind. And even with even with all of that, you know, you just look at that footage you, and you look at those two um, poles right there, the boat was rocking and rolling quite a bit. So the town we're living in now does this really cool community celebration for Halloween right downtown. All the restaurants and bars and homes in this historic district all set up just for Halloween for kids. It's really a neat thing from kids uh, five and six years old all the way up to 70 and 80 year olds. It was a really, really neat event. We'll show you a little bit of that real quick. This gives you an idea on the size of it. We kind of parked the car and walked a few blocks to get to it and you can just see how many people were there. I took a few of these photos just in videos just to show the sheer volume of it but this was in one of the first houses that uh, we got to you know they did the decorations up really good and it was still light enough to capture some good video it was a nightmare before Christmas um, theme which was neat uh, but even as we walked down the street there was this cool tree it's not a Halloween thing but it looked pretty cool I mean just give a sense of the a number of people here um, it's just massive. And now we're in downtown historic Punta Gorda and this like that dentist office as I mentioned on the right. These things crack me up every time I see them. But yeah, the girls had a good time and then we um, got sort of to the end right here in downtown and we started walking back the other way. This is hard to see, but that was a line that went all the way around the block for a haunted house in somebody's yard. Uh, and this is just some of the decorations at a few of the homes. You can just see how detailed some of these folks went with this and usually there would be the house owners would be sitting out on the edge of the sidewalk with you know a basket of candy and they'd be giving out candy to the kids um, as it got dark it kind of continued you can still see how many people were here it was really a, um, an exciting time this dude was scaring people to death which was pretty funny i uh, turned around to try and get footage of him scaring a guy he even had a i don't know jason guy here scary stuff but a good time for all that's pretty cool. Deb just said, it looks like there's a fog rolling in. And as it came out here, it sure is. It's pretty cool looking. It's actually cooled down just a little bit. It's not not a lot, just gray sky, but or low clouds, one of the two. But it's definitely rolling in. Our neighbors two houses down brought their boat over. Pretty darn nice. Nice trawler. Almost looks like it could be a marine trader or something. I'll have to ask him what it is. Beautiful though people here use their boats too they said that they had it uh, they had it in storage for a part of the year having a little bit of stuff done to it but they had just done the great loop last year and the year before that we spent some time down in the keys in it well later that day the wind really did start to pick up and you can just see how much it was blowing these palm trees now as it started raining from inside the house um, you know you can see it's water droplets on the screen because I wasn't going out there in this but man did it pick up um, that rain is coming down in sheets. Some of these video clips, you can really see how it's like progressing across the water from left to right, just because of how hard the wind was sort of shearing or whatever they call that. But 
like most storms, as quick as it comes, it leaves with a beautiful, beautiful remnant. It's been a little while since I've taken the boat out. I, I mean, a little while. I guess it's been a couple of weeks. Um, that seems like a long time. So, it's a beautiful morning this morning. Um, water was nice and calm. It's uh, not too windy, but it's a little bit cooler. I mean, it's probably 75, 78 degrees this morning, uh, maybe 80, but it feels great. So, but, you know, it seems like a good day to go on out for a boat ride. It was really, really low tide. So I wanted to go out and sound it um, as well up and down the channels and see what it would look like for when we bring the big boat over to the house. Um, <laughs> well, a little hairy, by the way. I mean, we're like 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, through most of it. And then right at the very end of the canal, it went right to six feet for about five or six feet of length. Um, I'm hoping that's just a little hump for a, you know, a little shoaling over that we could bounce right on through if we needed to. But uh, definitely want to time it and not do it on the very lowest of tides. And like I said, it is just about at uh, you know low water tide here so uh, regular tide by the way if a wind blows out in the same direction for quite a while i'll definitely see something different but you know we're at we're at eight feet right out here in the in the channel even at low so we'll be good through most of this i was just talking to a boating neighbor somebody that just got back from a big rv trip and has a uh, trawler there but they used to have a halberg razzie uh, five foot six inch or five foot eight inch draft i think he said um, and he said for him, the hardest part was really not in the canals or even in the channels, but he said the next 100 to 200 yards past the last marker up into the northern part of the um, harbor, the northern part of the canal, uh, channel. He said that's the part that's probably the most hairy because uh, while the Peace River is what flows down through this and feeds the harbor, he said you'll get a little bit of shoaling on the sides of it. So. Um, you know, have to watch that in the beginning. By the way, I'm down at 6.5 right here at this corner. That's a little hairy, but we'll see. <laughs> Might just be at that very edge because it's back up to 7.8 again. All right, beautiful view. Just heading through the canal at, you know, a whopping, I don't know, what are we doing? 4.7 knots or so, going nice and slow here. Well, actually, that's miles per hour. I got to change this to knots. I like to, like to have my boat in knots, not miles per hour. So one of the things I really like about this boat, um, and I guess it's probably all power boats, I'm just not used to it, short of like the dinghy is, you know, I wanna, if I wanna get up and go a little bit with this thing, you know, look at this. Now, you don't even have to give it any real gas. I'm slowly accelerating. And I'm up on a plane. You know, just perfectly fine on a plane already doing 26 miles an hour. things I love most about this area is like it's not uncommon here's dolphins just surfacing all over out here see if I they're always so hard to catch on camera when they're moving around let's see there's one right right in front of us oh well. I'm gonna head back toward the house I took the boat over here in a couple of uh, little canals just to practice maneuvering it. Um, you know, it's funny, you, you get a boat, you gotta get used to it a little bit. And I've struggled with just getting this thing to uh, to sort of handle the way I would expect it to. It's way more responsive and slides more on the water, obviously, than you know our big giant 68,000 pound uh, sailboat. So, 
yeah, this has been taking a little bit of practice, but um, I feel like I'm doing better at it. I was over here practicing over <laughs> by, by this big area called Harpoon Harry's and Fisherman's Village, just a bunch of shops and stuff. But I was over there practicing how well I could, um, how well I could turn it around in essentially, you know, one and a half or two times its boat length. So I practiced that in a couple of areas, just eyeballing between pylons so I could see if I could do it. Then I took it into an area like oh, the marina. They had like a double wide slip. And I pulled up into that to try to make a U-turn within it just to see how well I could, you know, maneuver it in there. So a little bit better. Um, obviously, there's not a lot of wind, not a lot of current right now, which is certainly helpful. But look, you got to start somewhere. And I'm not going to start on the hardest spot. <laughs> so, yeah, it's um, definitely taking a little getting used to. But I think I'm getting it, at least to the point where I'm not quite so embarrassed. Oh, cool. Well, here comes a sailboat. Looks like he's coming out of the canal one down from us, so one block away from us. That looks like a good, uh, what is that, 45 foot or so? Looks like maybe a, not a Gulf Star, I'm not sure what it is, but yeah, it's nice. She's a butte coming right out there. I don't know what she is, but she's pretty for sure. Miami, Florida, New Dawn. As I brought the boat back, my goal was to go to this spot right at the edge of our property and then just try to rotate the boat within a pretty narrow length. I'd say the mission was accomplished and I uh, was able to just pull right up next to the pylons, toss it in reverse to stop it, and just reach over and grab that line. So, you know what they say, ship shape, and now it's time to just put everything back and cover it up and call it a day. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. We took you back to Louisiana to ride out a storm in the middle of the night aboard sailing vessel Dream Chaser. We went downtown Punta Gorda for a really cool community celebration. And then we took the small power boat out just to get better at maneuvering it. If this is the type of content you think you'd find interesting, do us a favor, subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Join us next week as we go to the west coast of Florida on the beaches and we do a little bit of shark tooth hunting. It's amazing. You can find fossilized shark teeth. They're really cool. It's fun to do. It's a neat little family activity. And we might do a little bit of pool filtration maintenance. From Gil, Deb, and the girls, wishing you safe sailing and a following sea.